Fish on. Fish on like Donkey Kong. We're out here, a little windy day. Doing a little fish in the mangroves with a Slam Shady 2.0. I believe this is a Snooky here. Yep. Little guy, but hey, we'll take it. Started off cold day. Whoa, watch out there, Luke. This guy's feisty. They get all fired up. But it's a little bit chilly out. 2.0, owner twist lock hook, and Dr. Juice. I mean, does it just keep on working every single time? The uh, answer is yes, it does. Um, hooked right there in the side of the, come on, bud. Man, this is what I needed that hook to do earlier. When I had that redfish follow me up. We were doing some side casts along the other shore and it was on the not windy side. Glass calm. We could see everything and they could see us. I had one come up and I think as it was coming up, it could see us. Before I could even set the hook like a man, he was gone. Right. He gone. Maybe just tuning in. What's that? What I was, was going to say, or you had a Nancy hook set and uh, you still on it. No, the rule will never know. <laughs> Either way, you didn't catch one, I didn't catch one. <laughs> and I just caught one right there. So yeah, we're here just doing a little spring spring fishing. And um, in particular, we're talking about spring lures. Well, uh, depending on how it goes here the next 30 or so minutes, this is live. This is you know our first, uh, actually our first live pot on the water podcast uh, this year in 2022 for uh, various and sundry reasons. Some of it being weather related. We've had a couple of times we came out to film and uh, yeah, it was just horrible weather, rain, wind, million excuses. But uh, we're doing this live and uh, we will probably switch up. Maybe try the Power Prawn USA, which is quickly becoming one of our, uh, our members' favorite lures. And uh, now made in USA, now five per pack the same price of the of the two and uh those helix hooks those things are freaking awesome yeah yeah so we came out of the power Prawn usas they're they're like the brazilian ones that we've had before they're just easier to rig they skip better and uh and we made these hooks specifically for them they're called the Haas helix hooks and uh and so right now we have the power Prawn usa the big one it's the original it's 4.3 inches and, uh, and then we have the junior coming out pretty soon, which is gonna be three and a half inches. And so the, the bigger one has the four aught hook and the small one, the, the junior has a three aught hook, the Haas hooks that, were, uh, that we made for it. And I'm actually using the three aught hook with the Slam Shady 2.0. Uh -huh. So it's, uh, it's similar to the owner, very similar to the owner. Uh, it just has a wider gap and a, and a little bit thinner uh, a little bit thinner hook where it's not quite as thick. So it's not like as beefy, so you don't want to use it for like big heavy tackle, but uh, but it just has better hookup ratio given that it has a wider gap and uh, the hook is a little bit thinner. Yeah, that wider gap is nice. So it's been cool. So right now we're, uh, basically the trend that we've been seeing is the fish have been pushed up closer to the trees. This is like a medium, a medium tide right now. Um, and and we really have kind of a, a slow tide, so not a lot of water movement. So we're using the wind to our advantage. We're fishing the windy side of the shorelines. Uh, earlier we were sight fishing up on the, on the calm side just so we can see the fish better. We, we both actually forgot our glasses when we came out. Um, and so we, we did the calm water. The fish were super spooky. Joe had a red follow his, uh, a really nice red follow his lure, ate it twice, and uh, just wouldn't actually suck it down. So now we know the fish are gonna be pretty lethargic. We know they're tight to this tree, so now we're just covering water. So I just totally buzzed across that cut. Now that we're getting almost within casting range, uh, we're gonna start slowing down and, and just dissecting this area. Pretty deep right here. Yeah. Um, he has uh, not many boats out today. Um, saw a couple guides out, but for the most part, Kind of a slower day, about a 8.45ish, woo, that wind. But there were a ton of boats out over the weekend. So these fish are definitely on the, 
the more cautious realm. Spring break is that, time. Is that one up there? Shadow? Uh, worth the cast, but I don't really see it moving. So just knowing there's been a lot of people out, you just have to pretty much assume the fish are gonna be pretty. Be pretty awesome if it hits it in the tree. Pretty spooky. I save. Got it out, baby. Got it out. And I got some cool news with the, uh, I'm using one of them right now. The new custom salt strong rod. The team, uh, the partnership teamed up with Mudhole. And uh, it's finally happening. It's been a, what, a year and a half and it feels like it's mm -hmm. well over a year in the making. And we're now moving all of the rod production to America. How cool is that? Yeah, even like the blanks are actually made there too. It's not just shipping in all the parts uh, and assembling. This uh, obviously not everything can be made here, but the, all the the highest end components are, yep. um, and obviously the assembly. And pretty excited about that. Yeah, creating some jobs here in America. And I mean, from what we've seen, every time we've done stuff <laughs> in America, it has been better overall quality. You don't have as many of uh, of your units bad or defective. And um, that, that is one of the good things about this whole pandemic and supply chain issues and shipping issues is it's kind of in a good way forcing a lot of these companies who were manufacturing in places like China to look here at good old USA and bring uh, bringing it back, manufacturing baby. So I'm, I'm pumped. And our whole goal with it, oh, oh man, wind got me. Oh, oh, there you go. This would be awesome if I get a fish right here. Our whole goal, this is like a legit like $400 rod. Like this will be very comparable and probably better than if you've ever used one of those high-end G Loomis rods, you know, that are $400 or a really high-end St. Croix it will look and feel and react and cast just like that. But we want, since we're cutting out, you know, all the middlemen, we're not having to go through normal distribution like they do. Uh, our goal is to give it to you members, members only, a hundred dollars off. And so, uh, you know, a four hundred dollar rod, we're hoping to get it in the high two hundreds, where you could now have a four hundred legit four hundred dollar rod. And instantly, the day you either sign up for the club, or if you're already a current member, thank you, by the way, that you can justify the cost of membership plus some just from the rod purchase alone. That's our whole goal with it. And uh, from the looks like looks of it, we'll be able to do it. Yep. Which is really, really cool. Even here made, uh, made in America. And a lot of it's just cutting down the middle, man. Let's just be honest. I mean, every, every time, St. Croix or the G Loomis has to sell to a Bass Pro or whatever. I mean, it's marked up another 50%. Um, there's some, you know, pretty high markups in some of these things every time it changes hands, if you will. And so we get to go direct to consumer and uh, cut out some of that excess. So yeah, that's something I didn't realize until we actually started, you know, started getting in the industry and, and, uh, and, and starting the tackle store that pretty much every time somebody touches it, the price doubles essentially. So that's kind of the, the easy way to, to think about it. And, and so you cut out one, one middleman or two, in our case, we cut out all of them. Um, that's just a lot of savings. And so we're going to be passing on to members is the, is the premise. So I, I just want to, I never really thought much of, but it's, it's surprising how much, how much you can take out of the, of the cost just by skipping over a step or two. Yep. And so that'll be summer. We're still, we're still months away. And when you're doing this, you gotta do it right and uh, just continue to, to demo, make sure it's 100% perfect. But uh, yeah, come summer. Yeah, and the, and the cool thing about it too is that when you get a high-end rod, really with any rod, but especially if you're paying a lot of money for the rod, it really needs to be paired with a specific reel or a specific, at least reel weight. And a, a big problem in the industry is that you know, the, the rod manufacturers, they don't know exactly what reel is going to be on it. And, uh, and they're actually incentivized since, you know, the rods are going to be compared to other rods on the, on the rod rack. 
they're incentivized to just make it as light as possible so that it feels better to the, to the person in the store who's comparing the rods. And what that does is in many cases that'll take the rod out of balance when you actually pair it with a reel. Um, so some, of, some of my, I've been testing out a bunch of rods, buying the high-end ones and the low-end ones. And a lot of my highest-end rods, the balance is really tip-heavy because they just did everything they could to take all the weight out, um, much of which is in the butt. And, uh, and then when they do that, the butt is really light so that when you actually pair it up with the reel, especially with these lightweight reels that are now coming out, where you can have some legit reels for like, that are like eight, nine ounces, um, that'll almost always result in a tip heavy rod. And so our, our rod is specifically designed for these higher end lightweight reels so that you can have a really, finally have a, a rod and reel setup that's balanced with these really light, you know, eight to, to nine and a half in, uh, ounce, ounce reels. Even, even shorter, it's really, I guess, around eight, eight is kind of the midpoint that we focused on. Yep. And then even the rod spacing, the guide spacing was, again, it was assuming a, like a 2,500 uh, size reel for this first rod that we're coming out with. Um, where it's just fine tuned for these for these nice reels, these lightweight reels, and it's just the it's the ultimate. It is it is noticeable when you have a, an actual well balanced setup. So very happy about it. I'll tell you what, else I'm happy about is the fact that we went back and got our sunglasses. Yeah, <laughs> sun is coming up now. Looking back at the camera, I'm like ah. Yeah, so this is so one bad. of those one of those days. We're on the Gulf Coast of Florida, and we have the tides where it's not like, uh, it's not like the Atlantic where the tide's going up and down, up and down about the same amount. This is like a little, a little miniature. So it's a little small blip. And then this later on this afternoon is when there's a lot of water flow. So right now we're gonna have to work for every bite. As you can see, I'm uh, skipping over another little, another little gap. We're gonna hop over to this island. And if you're listening, we're just hitting up these little mangrove islands. And as soon as we finish one, we're hauling boogie to yep. the next one with a troll motor. And there might be some trout out here in the middle, but for the most part, the reds and snook, they'll be holding up really close to the trees. So we're gonna shoot over, hit this point up real quick. Points are always uh, worth a cast or two. Yep. Always hit the mangrove points, or any kind of points, anything that's irregular. It was funny when we were cruising early this morning we were just kind of going by these mangrove lines, seeing what's out there. And all the redfish that we saw were all either around irregular points or irregular areas in the mangrove or with birds or both. Remember Luke, every time like, oh, there's a group of birds. Saw the white egrets. We saw some reds. Pretty saw cool. Some very spooky reds. Where'd your Dr. Juice go, by the way? I got some in my pocket. Give me some of that, boy. Yeah. Reload, the juice is loose. If you guys haven't tried any Dr. Juice, what the heck you waiting on? Oh, something just spooked out. As soon as saw the Dr. Juice, it went crazy. Yeah, this stuff flat out works. It's uh, amazing how many testimonials we've, uh, we've had coming in from this. Dr. Juice Saltwater Slam. All right, where to fish? I'm seeing some things spook out. Yeah, I saw uh, one fish spook. Tell you, unrelated, kind of a cool story. Past weekend, we went and canoed the old Peace River. And uh, that was something we used to do in high school. And uh, we saw this one group, and for those of you who do this and know about it, uh, you probably, like, I can't believe you didn't know about it. And I, I heard about shark's teeth in the Peace River, but I didn't think it was something that you just found. I thought you had to go with like a guide or something that it was a little bit tougher. And we just happened to see this, this couple that had, you know, one of those, uh, what do they call it? They dig for gold. Little sifters. Sifters, like a, a little box sifter with a screen on the bottom. And, uh, sort of chatting up with them and you have any luck? You're like, yeah, we already found a couple shark's teeth. It's like, cool. And so it was right where an old creek, you could see there's a little bit of water left in it. I mean, enough to get your toes wet. 
that this old dried up creek met the actual Peace River. And so uh, we took the other side of it there up on the, on the front side and we took kind of the back side and uh, we didn't have any sifters, but my daughter had her net. She was in there trying to catch fish, meaning like a little dip net. And uh, lo and behold, 30, 40 minutes later, we had 10, 12 shark's teeth, uh, all just by taking that little net and scooping up little pebbles and then kind of sifting through it with our hands. It was so cool. But yes. it made you wonder, I mean, people have been getting shark's teeth out of the Peace River for, who knows, 80 years, 100 years, I don't know. And last time I checked, there's probably not any new sharks coming in there, right? Can't imagine so. I mean, they've had to be super old, right? right. Fossilized. So that means, I mean, who who can only imagine? And a lot of people are obviously taking them. And we took, you know, 10, oh, what is that? Oh, that's a mullet right there. See him? School of mullet, that's a good sign. You know, we took 10 teeth out of there. So, you, man, you wonder how crazy it was 50, 60, 70 years ago. Uh, you know, the, just the fact that these aren't being replenished like they are on, let's just say, Little Gasparill Island or something like that. Pretty wild. Yeah, I was down there over the weekend, and sure enough, there's still a good amount of shark's teeth down there. Not oh. nearly as many as there used to be, but still there. Yeah, that's a great place to find shark's teeth. So neat. But yeah, some of them, I mean, they didn't look like completely, it was almost like they were uh, not that petrified, all black, but they had almost been preserved sitting there in the water. Maybe it was because they were going up and up against these little stones, but they still had like legit color to them. And people find those Megalodon teeth there in the Peace River. If you guys don't know the Peace Rivers, look it up. I mean, just look up Zolfo Springs or Arcadia. It's... That guy's coming in hot. <laughs> no wigs no down there, wake. Bob. Um, people don't like to follow the rules. And now he's mad that we're in his spot. Uh, that's the second, that's the same guy as earlier, isn't it? We saw flying. I believe it is. In a no wake zone. Don't, don't be that person. <laughs> There's signs everywhere. Yeah, if they know better. Anyhow, Megalodon teeth. Crazy to think that in a place like Arcadia or Zolfo Springs, that it used to all be underwater. And there was some... well, there's, there's a lot of reports of even snook being caught in Winter Haven. It's yes. total central Florida, they can follow that river up. Yep. Yeah, but I'm guessing uh, at some point this it was more, uh, a whole lot more water on there. I mean, you can even oh, just yeah. see from the landscape how high the water was at some point. There in the Peace River, it's wild. So neat. Anyhow, if you guys haven't done that and you're in Central Florida, definitely worth it. There's a, I think it's called the Canoe Outpost. It's like $15 a head all day long. And they provide the canoe, your paddles. You can obviously bring your own. That's what we used to do in high school. But it was nice with the family just to be able to show up, they put you on a bus, take you upriver, and then you float down and paddle down and have a blast. All right, Luke is switching up lures. I'm going to the Power Prawn USA, rigging mm. it weedless, and I'm skipping up under these trees. It does look like it's probably going to be the best bet. This thing has a knack for getting the, the bigger fish, too. Oh, nice skip. Not. <laughs> if you're listening, Luke just had the worst skip cast in history. Sometimes you gotta do a couple bad ones to get some good ones. That's better. I think I see it. Whoa. Well, I'm not gonna get it like that. Just when you- uh, fish right back there, do you see so it? what happens if you make fun of somebody's cast, you make one that's way worse than the next one. That's debatable. <laughs> Go back to the camera footage to, oh. I was hoping that was going to be a snook. It was not. It was a log. Oh well. And uh, also got a couple of other new lures. For those of you who are always wondering what we're working on next, 
we've got a couple molds in the mix. All I can tell you is swim bait. And that's all I can tell you. Oh, what else I could tell you is I knew I felt a little tap. That's what it looks like to get puffer. It's called a puffer fish. Dang. Stinking puffers. Yeah, it's those things, no matter what salt plastic you're using, those puffers will go right through it. They're bad news. Yeah, even even the Z-Man material, they can uh they can bust through that stuff. So nasty. Yeah, and so now that uh, again these fish are gonna be they're they're pretty lethargic. <laughs> We know they're not going to be chasing down lures, and so we're having to go pretty slow, and we're just fishing tight to these mangroves. This is a, just a great high percentage way to go out there and uh, and just get fish, whether you're fishing mangroves or docks, right? Even even when they're they're finicky, they're going to be holding your structure, and if you get a good looking lure right in front of their face, they're going to eat it. So uh, right now it's just a, a numbers game, just cast casting every nook and cranny. Um, knowing that eventually we're going to get some. What is a cranny, by the way? A nook? A cranny? <laughs> Joel, do you know? Joel doesn't know. Did anyone right know? There. What do you see? It's a little cranny, a little, little cove, a little... I don't know. All right, Dr. Hughes. Catch me something besides a puffer. All right, please, someone look up. Cause we're out here on the water, this is live. By the time we uh, publish it, we'll probably know what a nook is and a cranny. Think it's just one and the same? I don't know. <laughs> Where did the word come from? Where did it originate? Is it Greek? Wikipedia. Latin? French, perhaps? I could see them saying cranny. Oh man, some snook just followed mine up. Oh, I was ripping back. it away from the... <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, uh -huh. dang, that was not a puffer. First cast of that fresh, fresh Dr. Juice. Dang. That one hit uh, pretty hard. I like those aggressive hits. Yeah, the one I, the, the one I saw that was following me was just a little small guy, but. It was interested. I'm gonna go hit this point here. Whoop. Lots of mangroves, as far as the eye can see. So, how do you pick a good mangrove line, Luke? Uh, well, I mean, obviously, like, looking at depth contours, and, um, and and now that we're getting closer to the spring, a lot of it's just finding the food and. And that's a, a problem today. There's really not been a lot of signs of life on like the food realm. Like every time we've seen a sign, we've got, we've had some good results. There just really hasn't been much. Like looking around, like there's a pelican there. It's just sitting in the water. That's not a very good sign. All right, it's cool that there's a bird there, but it'd be a lot cooler if they were actually diving and actively feeding. It's just right now we we're in, in a very low current stage. So everything's just kind of, just kind of sitting and waiting for later in the day once the, you know, once the uh, the current starts starts moving and starts moving that food around. So this right now is like just everything's just kind of at a, not a standstill altogether, but it's just not the ideal time to be uh, to be fishing. But sometimes you just got to go when you can go and make the best of it. Yeah, I didn't even look to see what the strike score was. I didn't either. But this I'm, is the only time we can go, so. Yeah, I'm guessing it was not have been good. great. And this time of day was definitely not the best time. But still proven kiss fish, got one. Couple, another strike, Luke had a follow up. But uh, I love this time of year. Still cool out in the morning. A little bit chillier today than I thought it would be. Still got our jackets on. Mosquitoes aren't out yet. What you looking for? It's gonna go up in that little cut, but I wasn't seeing much there either. So we'll just keep on going down. And part of it too, uh, we're back in this area. 
we saw one of our uh, our members had uh, had some pretty good luck somewhere around here. And that part's pretty cool about the insider community is you know everyone's posting their catches and what's working and just a great way to learn the trends, and and we use it as well. Find out what's happening, where the fish are. God, this area looks so good. But I've not seen as much as I'd yeah, like. I came back here at, uh, at a really low tide, so there was a bunch of fish, and I think they were just kind of all, it's the fact the water was so low, they pretty much, I just found the, the deep zone, and they were right there, a bunch of them. And so I was like, oh man, there's a bunch of fish here. Now that the water's higher, they seem to be pretty spread out. Like I'm not seeing, just looking around, not seeing any, any zone that is an obvious choice. So we gotta do it the old fashioned way. Yep. Cast. Cast until we find the 9010. But so far, it's both times we've had strikes and the fish have been around mangrove points. Yep. In irregular patterns. I'm gonna try to sneak it right in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, come on. That deserved a strike. That deserved a strike. Yeah, so talk about what you're doing at Little Gasparilla. I saw the uh, the figure eight. It worked. Yeah, yeah, it's called, uh, formally called swishing. And uh, and so what it is, this is fishing from, in my case, I was from a dock uh, with a snook light, you know, with one of those lights shining down the water and a lot of snook on it. and. I was catching, I was just testing out the power prawn, you know, these different shrimp lures. And, um, and what's been fascinating is that all like the lures that, that look really good in like the tackle stores where it has like every single leg is intact and it just looks super realistic. They, the actual glide in the water is just not natural where those, those fish, even when they're actively feeding on shrimp, you know, cause there's some shrimp running. So you see a natural shrimp come through and they just get hammered and throwing uh, like, well, pick on one, one was a live target and there's uh, multiple others too, but they have like, where it just looks like a, like an identical shrimp. Like it's a, an actual work of art. Like it actually really is impressive how realistic they make it. But, uh, but just the, the glide in the water doesn't really resemble an actual shrimp and the fish just don't react to it. They're, they're not feeding on it. And then when I put one of these power prawn USAs is really designed for, for a, just a kind of a, a fishing glide where we don't have all those frills. Um, they were smacking it. But what I realized is as the current was turning in the fish, like less, less shrimp, less bait fish was getting pushed through the light. The fish weren't as aggressive. And at that time, what you actually got the strikes that I'll show you here by the boat, it's called, I, I used to call it the figure eight method and um, saw in the comment feeds that it's called swishing, but I basically get about eight inches of, of line out and I was using this exact same setup, the Power Prawn USA with the, uh, the Haas hook and dip the rod in the water and just do these swishes like this, where it's literally making a bunch of racket. And, and uh, it's shocking how, I, it didn't work every single time, but I caught multiple snook doing this and you start doing it and then a couple of them will come up, check it out. And then one will just get mad or whatever and come up and smack it. And so I'm literally hooking snook with just eight inches of line from the rod tip. So pretty, uh, pretty cool. And, and so when you're out there on a snook light, it's worth a, worth a shot, right? If, you're not, if it's not working the traditional way, give it a try. And, and <laughs> it is shocking. I've now probably caught maybe a half dozen. So I'm, I'm relatively new to it. Um, and I've seen it even happen during the daylight too. I've seen huh. uh, videos online and even one of our members, uh, Gene Hammond. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah, has, cool. has caught multiple snook doing that. And, uh, and he, he just uses a paddle tail. Um, so really cool. It's just neat, like right. It's like I would have never thought that would be possible. And and then on the, some of the comment feeds, I posted a uh, a video. So in one case, I, I had my camera in one hand, right. In fact, that I'm not casting. I, I'd had my camera in one hand doing this right here, and and caught one. And so I posted online, and uh, some guys were talking about how they've done that for tarpon under bridges. Really? That would be pretty cool, like with giant cane poles. Uh, apparently, people used to do that back in the day down like in Inglewood. Hey. And uh, could you imagine a tarpon hitting that 
<laughs> right at the rod tip. That'd be insane. Good way to snap a rod. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, I'm going way up there. So pretty cool. And what uh, one thing that might need to, might need to move because this this shoreline is actually fairly deep around here and it seems like those strikes we were getting were up on shallower little points. I'm almost wondering if we're a little bit too deep out here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh boy. Uh oh, my swishing must have Power Prime catches the everything. Part of doing these things live is that you see the good, the bad, the ugly. I had what would have normally been an amazing cast with a weedless lure end up with hook in a mangrove. <laughs> well, let's go see if we see any fish up here while we're up. Blowing the spot out. So one thing to just, this is gonna happen when you're getting mangroves, so just make sure that all the rods are out of the way. Try to minimize damage. All right, so we got wind blowing us in. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> got a little too close to the bush and then turned it and turned it full full speed. Oh, in the wrong I didn't direction. notice. <laughs> Hardly noticeable. All right, other rods are all good. So that's a good way to guarantee that you spook every fish uh, oh around too. The one bad thing about tillers, that every once in a while. Can get out of hand. Uh, Camera guys are laughing. Right. You want me to hold the rod in? No. Uh, watch the front. Oh, this is. There we are. Simple as that. Ooh. That was good <laughs> stuff. Oh. That was good stuff. <laughs> uh. Oh, come on, get off there. Uh, let me use my strong hand. <laughs> Still stuck. You guys are listening. Oh, this is great. You guys have to watch this. All right, Joe, how about give me a little help? Make yourself useful for once. <laughs> Man, it is really wrapped around there. There we go. Yeah, mangroves are incredibly good at Getting and holding on to lures. All right. I think we're good now. <laughs> yeah, and, and one one trick too, when, when fishing the windy side, especially if it's really windy, is to is to use the, the, uh, the if you have a power pole, just use a power pole, and that way you can basically pin yourself down, and that way you're, you're guaranteed to not get jammed into the trees like we just did. The, uh, well, let me, before I make another cast, I'm gonna, um, yeah, for, for getting under trees, very important is to dig that hook point into the soft plastic. Had I done that, we would have not had that issue. What's that over there? Something on the bottom. All right, now I gotta make up for that. The rule is you have to catch more fish than mangrove trees. So right now, I'm, uh, <clears throat> I'm fishing on credit. <laughs> Uh, it's too funny. Too funny there, Bab. So, um, you are loving that BGMQ, huh? You knew, uh... Yeah, I've been really impressed with this thing. The, uh, I've, I'm still, I still like the Fuego. I mean, for a hundred dollars, the Fuego is amazing. <clears throat> but if, uh, if like a $200 real purchase isn't a budget, this, this MQ has definitely been the best, my, my most impressed reel that's in like the, anything less than like 250 bucks. Yeah. And, uh, and it's actually under a hundred. I think the MSRP is like 199. Yeah, they're, they're smooth. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it is super smooth. And I've had this one for a while now and I've been abusing it. I've been purposely not being very good to it. Obviously not like dunking it on purpose or, or, uh, you know, doing bad things to it, but I'm not doing anything special. I just get it back and just hose it off, which is really not the best thing to do. The best, the best way to keep a reel in good condition is actually just like do a light mist of, of water, of fresh water, and then wipe it off with a towel immediately. 
So I don't do that. I just been just getting the hose and spraying it down and then just letting the, letting the air um, eventually dry it off. And uh, this thing is still is just as smooth as the first day. And even just fighting a fish, it's rock solid. Like I had that, had a really cool snook catch with, uh, even with Otis on board, it was uh, like a 32, 33 inch snook, had me up on our dock. And uh, it just, I don't know, just the drag was really smooth. To, it enabled my line to not break and uh, end up landing that fish. Yeah, pretty much the whole team uh, ended up buying one because we couldn't get Fuegos. I mean, Fuegos have been our go-to forever, and we still still love the Fuegos. De definitely, I mean, the best value at, in that whoa, in that $100 range. But uh, we're like, ah, we'll use BGMQ, at least till we get Fuegos. And now we're like, man, really love these BGMQs. Yeah, and they're new, so they're, they're, they're lesser known. And the, the BG name is, uh, is very well known. And the, and the BGs in general are usually in the, like the $100 range or so. And so I think, I think a misconception is that it's the same thing. And they're, they're really not the same at all, except for the, the BG is in the name. Um, Cause the original BG, the BG stands for black and gold and the current BG MQs, that stands for big game. So it's a whole different series. They're obviously not black and gold. This is, uh, you know, black and, uh, and silver. And, uh, but most importantly, they have the MQ technology, which, um, which basically helps keep water out of the reel. So this is like basically like one, I'm not a technical guy, but this is basically one, one big plate and, and everything around here is all sealed. A lot of the water intrusion and the, the water intrusion that does the most damage comes in from around this area, like around where the handle is coming into the reel. It's not really from the top. There's all reels have pretty good protection of water seeping in through the drag system. So down here in the, in the reel handle section is where a lot of the damage happens. And, uh, and this MQ technology um, significantly helps just keep the gears protected. And they have rubber, you know, little rubber gaskets and around all the, the major, uh, the major points. And it's surprising how a lot of reels in that 200 to 300 dollar range don't have all that oh and uh that cast so for that reason these mqs are these bgmqs are just in my again in my opinion like i still call it a premium reel because it's you know it's still kind of expensive anything 200 dollars is more than i normally pay for reels but uh but so far i've been really happy with this especially when a lot of the the reels that i used to buy and won't say the name, but it rhymes with Shimano, is that uh, like those, those CI4s, oh. I know they don't make CI4s anymore, uh. but after just th maybe three, four or five months of, of fishing pretty hard, yes. I, uh, I just you know, hear that really loud squeaking and it's, that, it's those bearings. They just seem to, to, uh, just to, to not last as nearly as long as, as these guys have lasted. Right. But that could have changed. That, that, that was like six years ago. Coming up to a, a bit of a point here. I'll put this back in. Uh, yeah, we're coming up to a little opening. Ooh, ooh I had something. Oh, God. Something just tapped me. I'm uh, back to back in the trees. Let's see if I can get out of this one. Yeah, and so a trick on getting out of trees, and Joe's doing it, uh, is to not yank it really hard. Look at that. Like when, you, when you have the saw plastics weedless, the worst thing you can do is yank it really hard because then you're actually setting the hook and guaranteeing that the hook point's going to be exposed. Whereas just doing the light little taps like he was doing uh, does the best job at getting those, uh, getting the lure out without getting snagged. Got to get used to casting the wind. It's crazy, even how light little lure, like a slam shooting 2.0 on a under hook, how much it flies when the wind catches it. All right, we're Surprising in a speed. How few we started catching? We started the morning with the wind protected side. We saw a good amount of fish. They're all super spooky, and then we hopped on the windy side and immediately started getting strikes. And now we're Bit of a dry spell. Wind is picking up. 
Wind is definitely picking up. Oh, oh, a bunch of jacks. <laughs> <laughs> Zooming on that, Joel. Yeah, yeah, they're coming in on me. Like right, right down below us. See, they'll keep coming up. Let's actually get a top water. That'd be pretty fun. Oh, look, look, look. Do you see it coming? Dude, they're like speeding. Let's see if we can get a top water on. So they're coming up crazy good thing, fast. Good thing about jacks is they're an aggressive fish. Joe, Joe, if you can be in charge of the trolling motor. So even the jacks aren't even aggressive enough to get on top. Well, we tried. All right, Joe. Well, I don't have enough weight up here. You need to go the other way. Other way. Left. Oh, I was going to go this way. Nope. Oh, I see a boat there. Sorry. Other left. <laughs> nah, I get the jacks. Well, we at least had some... Uh, Do you get one to come up? I didn't even see. No, yeah, they're... Uh, they weren't that, that, that aggressive. They are all about that sweep, swiping out that power prong. Yeah, that was crazy. Super aggressive. All right, so we're, we're gonna keep going up here in the wind? Yeah, there's a nice little cove up here that's worth a shot. All right. I was here a few weeks ago and there's some big snook up in there. Whoa! Man, you see what that wind does? All right, baby. Uh, yeah, I wonder why uh, Daiwa did that with uh, BG. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's because that was a confusing point. Oh, it's a, a new BG, and like actually, it's it's very different. Naming is so important. That's why we spend time like on. But but the good news is the fact that it's new and and uh, and not as many people know about it yet. It's actually one of the the few reels that you can actually get. It's true. Because although the supply chain is better than it was this time last year, there's still, it's been very difficult to, to get gear. Then yes, even the yes, reviews, yes. like we've had, you know, we, we've had these in stock for a while. I'll say just like everything that comes and goes in stock, but the reviews on it, I still haven't, we haven't had a single issue that I can remember from, from uh, we've gone through a bunch of these, it's shocking how good the response has been on this reel. A lot of times I'm a little bit skeptical on like a new reel coming out that it's not going to be very good. It's going to have some oversight in the development of it, but I've been nothing but impressed. Uh, come on, baby. All right, so here, hitting this point. Oh, here comes someone else. Golly. <laughs> Different boat now. A lot of people violating the rules. Unbelievable. I must have a different measurement of idle. <laughs> must be European. <laughs> Metric system. All right, this frustrating. Is, this area should be holding some fish. Yeah, it looks money. I'm getting right up in there. All right, so you got the power prawn still? You know it. And I got the Slam Shady 2.0. If you're listening, we're here in Tampa Bay area and we're just focusing in on these mangrove points, for the most part. Wind is cranking, tide's not doing too much. Now that was a good cast, that deserves a strike. Oh, just, just like that one does. Just gonna cruise it down. I think I see a couple little snook back there where you were, no? Yeah, I think they're just logs, I saw the same thing. They didn't flinch when I took the lure next to them. Place tricks with your eyes. Like being in a desert. Yeah, and a big thing too, fishing these mangroves, is to just to keep the uh, keep the cast low. 
This isn't, ooh, there's a good red oh, fish right there. That's a big there. red, dude. You're gonna be right in front of yeah. him. Let's see, if, let's see if he eats it. I can't see where my lure is compared oh, to it. Oh, you spooked him. Did my line hit him? Dang, I think my yeah. line might've hit him. Oh, man. That was, uh, that dude, was, that a, was nice a Mondo red. red. So that was holding, that was actually holding about five feet off the trees. But, uh, but when you are fishing these trees, it's very smart to, uh, to keep the rod low. As you'll see, we're not doing many overhand casts. Uh, that way we can just punch these, punch these lures. Oh, oh man, I just had something. That way we can punch these lures up under the trees. Of course, I just did overhand cast. But... Yeah, but you, you're casting across a point there. Anytime you're trying to cast to the edge of mangroves or especially up under, it is essential to have that lure, to have a low trajectory. Dude, I wish you would have got that red, man. That, yeah, that was, was a big that one. That was a nice one. Jeez. All right, I'm gonna go back here in this little creek. It is funny how these, the Power Brown USA, especially this bigger one, I've still yet to catch an underslot red with it. Huh. Um, and most of them, most of my catches have been either upper slots or even over. Yeah, it does seem to catch bigger fish. And I saw some people catching some pretty big flounder. What was that? Dang, that was a giant snook. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, like a shark. That was a really big snook. Oh, man. So, so we've got some fish right, around. Some big fish back here. All right, we found the 90 tins in. Now we got to catch one. We're in this little mangrove cove now, basically. And lots of irregular patterns and shapes, nooks and crannies, if you're into that kind of stuff. All right, I'm going over. Yep. Use the wind to my advantage that time. And it's a little bit deeper here. What do you think, three and a half? Yeah, this is on the deeper spectrum than what I generally fish around here. I this is seen some big fish. This has a little bit less wind exposure. Seems like they're liking that. I want to get one of those big reds. That's what make me happy. Oh yeah. That would make me happy. Yeah, so also uh, unrelated, funny story. My daughter and I discovered a massive yellow jacket nest. When I say massive, I'm talking about thousands of yellow jackets. And she saw a video of this guy called the Hornet King. Great YouTube channel, by the way. He literally just goes and basically exterminates monster yellow jacket and hornet and wasp nest. And he did one where it was an underground yellow jacket nest. And you actually get like the comb, not like a honeycomb, but the comb that has all the babies in it. It's massive. I mean, you know, seven stories. It's the size of a, you know, a couple basketballs. She's like, we gotta do it, we gotta do it. I was like, oh, this is crazy. What could go wrong, right? So we bought little, the cheap version of the bee suit and uh, put some thick gloves on and boots and we went to town on this thing. And you actually use a vacuum, use a shop vac. And the scariest part was just going up. Cause like you see them, they're, they're swarming around their little hole and it's a hole and you can't see how deep it is. You don't really know what's under it. You just know there's a ton of them in there cause you can see them, you can hear them. It's like an energy to them. And man, that was one of the scariest things. Just seeing these things swarming around you cause your instincts are telling you that, you know, it's time to run. And you feel like they're in your hood cause they're so loud all over your ears in your face, and they're just stinging you. They're trying to sting you to death. I'm probably stung 300, maybe 400 times. I only, you know, felt five of them, only five of them connected. Lucky me. So we did it. But just like fishing, it's all about creating the memories, you know? It's like, you know what? My daughter will talk about this forever. Dad gets stung. 
save the day, say all the neighbors are happy that we destroyed this monster nest. Yeah, I was shocked how big that thing was. That's crazy. It was literally bigger than a, the basketball. Oh, much bigger. So this was, uh, we measured it. So it was 24 inches in circumference. Wow. And a little over two feet deep. That's crazy. So it looked like it was about seven layers and I ended up destroying it by accident. It's gotta be pretty fragile, right? When yeah, I mean, it's basically it. made out of paper. And what these things do is they, they go excavate. So they have different types of workers in their little colony. And there's some that are actually like excavating and basically taking the sand out one little grain at a time, just like ants. And the other ones are going and getting paper essentially from bark, from trees and branches. And they're building this home essentially almost like out of paper mache. It's wild. And they get huge. If you Google it, ooh, they get huge. So yeah, it was funny. It's a couple of neighbors were walking by <laughs> And we're sitting there and looks like, they look like hazmat suits and we're all got duct tape around the, cause your most vulnerable parts are your, your, your uh, legs, your ankles and your wrists. So we're completely duct taped up in white bee suits and people are like, what is going on? They probably thought we were like COVID relief. That's what we look like. Ooh. Another funny one, we got back from the Bahamas not too long ago, and you have to get tested. I won't mention the name of the place, but you have to get tested to get home. And we had heard that essentially these big hotels don't want any negative publicity about someone having COVID in their resort, which makes sense, because then people cancel their trips and freak out. And so they're like, they're, we told they were basically paid to give negative test results. And no lie, <clears throat> I watched this happen. My wife, I'm sitting there, I'm next, she's up, they do the swab, and I'm seven feet away from her. And in between her getting the swab and stand, literally they swab, they go, done, it's, it's a assembly line. She already had the email from them saying that she was negative. Uh, meaning they didn't test, they didn't test at all. And same with me. So I was like, this is crazy. Uh, gives you a lot of, a lot of hope for our medical <laughs> testing facilities. But it really was wild and, and kind of sad that they actually, I don't even know why they did it. Like, why not just wait an hour? But they emailed her a negative test <laughs> before she even had chance to walk seven feet. So misprogrammed their autoresponder. Yeah, yeah, the autoresponder went off a little too quick. All right, well, I think we need to bail. This is, uh, yeah, this is clearly not working. We need to find some shallower water, I think. I feel like the, the ones we've been seeing have been a little bit shallower than this. <clears throat> so let's go put the big motor down and put, puts, oh, puts around until we can find some more action. All right. Well, we'll end it here. We'll uh, we'll just call this one a uh, what to do on a tough day, and and Luke and Joe chatting about life, <laughs> liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Something, uh, yeah, something shot out. It's probably a sheep's head. Sheepy, Some trees there. Yep. Not every trip you're going to crush the fish, but yeah. it's always worth a try. You never so, know. So, uh, kind of a bum way to start our very first live trip again, but you know what? It's proof we that always, they're real. Yeah, we always said that uh, last year when we were doing these is you uh, you get to see what really happens. Some days are tough. Windier than we thought it was going to be. Start of the day off on the wrong foot. Both of us forgetting our sunglasses. <laughs> First time it's ever, I've never forgotten mine. And we both forgot them. Luke's, I'm like, oh man, I forgot them. Luke's kind of like giggling. He's like, holy smokes, I forgot mine too. I'm like, oh. Just not our day. Not yep, our day. Yep, yep. But definitely uh, saw a fish. We found a couple little 9010 zones, and uh, it's still early. It's, yeah, it's only 915. So we still got uh, another hour or so that we're going to go fish. And uh, maybe we'll do a second podcast if we, uh, if we really find some feeders. But for now, hope you guys enjoyed it. 
Uh, if you haven't checked out uh, the Daiwa BGMQ, it's there at uh, Fish Strong, same with the Power Pond USA, same with Slam Shaded 2.0. We have the Hunter Packs are back now, finally. Uh, we were uh, running low on those things and finally got a big, uh, big order in. And uh, in rods, we'll definitely keep you posted on these mud hole rods coming in. And as I said, that the goal is that we're going to be able to give it $100 off to, uh, to our members, which is going to be really, really awesome. And then uh, finally, some really cool uh, improvements to our Smart Fishing Tide software. We've, uh, we've hired a couple of different developers, and you're going to see um, uh, essentially a whole new layer on sonar and on our satellite maps and even tying in the wind with, uh, with Wendy, doing a little partnership with Wendy app. So we're gonna have all of that tied in uh, to our, uh, our, our little progressive app, which really, really pumped about. So you can find that at smartfishingtides.com. It's members only. And, uh, and of course, if you're a member, you can be in the community and click on tides and uh, definitely click on the map too. I, I've, I've seen a lot of members who are saying, hey, I'm in this area, where do I find the fishing reports? When you're in community.saltshore.com, there's a little, depending on if you're on mobile or, or a tablet or whatever, but look for a thing that says map. It's in every drop down. It's, it's, it's even in the bottom right on every mobile phone, I believe. And uh, when you click map, you can now zoom in anywhere and actually see every single fishing report and it breaks it down. If it's an on the water report like this, or if it's a spot dissection, or if it's a member report, super, super helpful. And I think you'd be blown away when you see how many pins, every one of those pins that you see when you click map is one of those three things and they're, they're color labeled by color. So, man, the wind is cranking, isn't it? Yep, there's that wind. Yep. So guys, we appreciate you big time. And uh, we'll talk to you on the next uh, episode. We'll be doing many more of these live versions. And uh, we're just going to go on record here and say this is going to be the slowest one. We got one to start off slow. It's hard to get much slower than this one. Yeah, it was a, uh, what, one fish in 30 minutes? But then again, that's part of life sometimes. You got to pivot. And now we know what not to do. And we'll go try a whole new, uh, whole new area. And we'll report back on the Insider Club. So, guys, appreciate you. We out. Please uh, like and subscribe and uh, leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Let us know what, uh, what, uh, what, what you like to see in terms of any specific topics, et cetera. We out. Peace in the Middle East. See you. Whoop.